Welcome back to coverage of the Neon Dynasty Championship. It's round 14. We've only got two more rounds to go today, and we are just one game away of putting <laughs> Johnny Manuel Dupra into the top eight. Marnie, could be this round. It, it could be, but I, I sort of like this Phoenix list that Ilya and his team have brought. There's a little bit of sideboard spice that might maybe change the game plan here in a way John Emmanuel Dupra is not expecting from the average Phoenix deck. So we'll see how it plays out. But you know me, I love affinity, so I'm hoping he can get it done. I'm hoping so too. I'm a big fan of JED, so... Very much hoping that he manages to seal it up here and can go and get a good night's sleep ahead of tomorrow's top eight. But it's going to be a tough mountain to climb. Ely Cassis is one heck of a good magic player. And this deck, there's no surprise or there's a reason that it is the most played deck this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. And both players have pretty great hands. Jean Emmanuel looks like does have a Hallowed Fountain to play Esper Sentinel on one. Ely has Dragon's Ray Chandler on one. So both players actually starting with their one drop of choice. And for Ely, awkwardly right now, doesn't have an untapped second land to play on turn two. So if this Esper Sentinel comes down, which it almost certainly will, he'll have to not pay tax on op though, as I say that, pathway drawn. <laughs> The top of the deck is just like, you know what, Monty, just for that, I'm going to give him an untapped land so he can pay his taxes. Dragon's Rage Chandler swinging on in here, tempting the Esper Sentinel with a block, but JED says, nope, no thank you. Passes the turn back, holding up that opt for the end step. Thought Monitor is the draw here for John Emmanuel, who uh, doesn't have all that many options for turn two, just the Soul Guide Lantern, which would ideally like to catch a good old Arclight Phoenix. Yeah, but you really don't want to risk not playing the Soul Guide Lantern and then having your opponent on turn three go like, all right, I'm not going to pay tax. I'm going to Faithless Looting, cast two more spells, get some Phoenixes back, and you're holding Lantern. Like, uh-oh. So uh, running that out there, not exiling anything, but having it in play. And yeah, Esper Sentinel, just such a nuisance against this Is It Phoenix deck. Just forcing your opponent to always play a mana off if they don't want to give you more cards to work with in a deck that is trying to maximize its mana. So you can see why JED is prioritizing bringing a deck to the tournament that has four copies of it in the main deck and the card works in the deck by being an artifact. Yeah. Just so impressive all around. Oh, it's such a great card. And there's an answer for said great card in Pillar of Flame. So that can get this annoying little critter off the battlefield here and let Ely Cassis carry on with his regular game plan. Yeah, going to pay the tax again. There was a potential option for Ely to iteration and just say, all right, I'm not paying the tax this turn. You can draw one card and then I'll play the pillar and get rid of your creature. But this really just shows how much Ely prioritizes not giving this affinity deck any extra cards. And looking at Jean Emmanuel de Pras hand, it's a little awkward because he's drawn two Hallowed Fountains and a Spire of Industry. None of the treasure vaults that he may be looking for to get double discounts on these thought monitors. Portable hole, good draw, but he's still holding a Karn that he'll have to pay, play for four mana, and two thought monitors that currently still cost five. Yeah, those are some expensive birdies right now. Expressive iteration is going to be the play here for Ely Cassis is he wants to find land number four. Nothing that JED could do about it at this point. Yeah, JD does have the Soul Guide Lantern available for him, but he's not going to use it in response to an expressive iteration. Certainly wanting to save that one for phoenixes to come back or if things start to get out of hand for ely finding another expressive iteration here is nice unholy heat maybe not that necessary here considering jean emmanuel hasn't presented a threat yet though you don't really want to get caught off guard so ely taking the time to think about it i would guess that regardless of what the first card he chooses is he's going to take the spire buff canal as the second and it's really do I value more card selection over being safe with having a removal spell? Something to do here for Jean Emmanuel, who finds an Esper Sentinel in his draw step. Line number four is available to him, and Karn, Scion of Urza, is going to come on down. And uh, let's see if he finds some lands here for 
John Emmanuel, or if we're just going to start making good old constructs. He's making the construct, which is good for Ely because this Arclight Phoenix hard cast from the hand can now take down the Karn, but this token is going to stick around. So getting that board presence, but it is at the cost of exposing your Karn to a potential bird. Up, sending away Consider, Stormcarved Coast, drawn off the spell, and uh, like you mentioned, Arclight Phoenix, you can hard cast them! And uh, a nod of recognition there from Jean Emmanuel as Karn is gonna bite the dust here, unfortunately. Yeah, and unfortunately for Ely, doesn't have Delirium, and even if he did, the Soul Guide Lantern on the battlefield would be able to negate it. So this Unholy Heat, not able to deal with this Karnstruck yet, and that means that Jean Emmanuel de Pra can now have a turn where he goes something like Esper Sentinel into a three mana Thought Monitor, draw some cards, and start getting artifacts on the battlefield, which with another Thought Monitor in hand, look pretty good. Now, as with Convoke, one drops are free, so if he wanted to run out the Thought Monitor there, it could do so, but opts to go for the Nettle Cyst instead, getting a big ol' 5-5 five five down the battlefield, so Karnstruct gonna swing in there for 5 points of damage. Down to 14 goes Cassis, who draws another Unholy Heat, and would love to get the 4th card type into the graveyard here to get that Delirium online. Yeah, this is really tough for Ely because he's holding two heats that are essentially only able to answer this Esper Sentinel right now. And he's also holding a Finale of Promise that is fully countered by that Soul Guide Lantern that's on the battlefield. So it feels like Ely might need to force the issue here and just make John Emmanuel de Pra counter this Finale of Promise by using that Lantern so he can try to build Delirium for these Unholy Heats. Gonna pay the one here for the Esper Sentinel. We'll get a trigger off the Dragon's Rage Chandler. Yeah, we want that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> want maybe too casual of a word. I think Ely needs yeah. that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now that the tax has been paid, Unholy Heat can take care of this Esper Sentinel. Making these creatures just a teeny tiny bit smaller, too, which is very helpful indeed. Yeah, interestingly enough, does have that sorcery in the graveyard with this Unholy Heat. So now two card types might be able to rebuild Delirium rather quickly with this Faithless Looting already in hand with this Expressive Iteration on top of the deck. But the big question is how much damage can JED present this turn? Thought Monitor, we know at least is going to make each of these a 4-4, but if he's able to draw... Ooh. A zero mana artifact and a treasure vault, for example. You could have made them six sixes, as is a pair of five fives coming over for 10 damage. And Ily is looking like he's in dire straits because a Tormaz crypt being part of the draw means that Ely can't set up an explosive Phoenix turn to try to close this out. Woo wee. Dragon's Rage Chandler, trigger Faithless Looting in the bin. What does Expressive Iteration find here for Ely Cassis? an Unholy Heat, and a Sprite Dragon, which he may well need just as an extra blocker against this ever-growing army that Depra is assembling. Yeah, this, this is tough. Uh, taking the Steam Vents would actually allow you to Faithless Looting, or the Sprite Dragon, would allow you to Faithless Looting, try to put a creature and a land in the graveyard and turn on Delirium. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Ely's line be something like Unholy Heat goes to Exile, one of the two card types comes to the, la comes to the hand, and then mm -hmm. tries to set up a Faithless Looting to clear off this board, but maybe just wants to play it safe by getting the Sprite Dragon onto the battlefield as a creature. Yeah, and doubtless something's going to have to block this turn, so that would get a creature type, well, that would get a creature into the bin. Hmm. Still only two types, and yeah, going for the Faithless Looting next, Dragon's Ray Chandler gives you a Surveil first, so there's your land into cool. the graveyard. So now you just need a creature to turn on, and there there's you some go. creatures. All right, so Unholy Heat and Delirium online you could double unholy heat down those creatures and attack with everything but Ailey, the big problem is still that tormos crypt so Ely, being yeah. aware of this has to time these spells properly if he wants to actually get any use out of them 
<laughs> He's going down to two. This is terrifying. <sighs> okay, this is fine. Nobody panic. Yeah, two lands. Get out of here. We don't need uh, any of that right now. I, I, I'm panicking, Ely. I, I, Haley. I don't know. <laughs> this is tough. This channeler has to attack. Uh -huh. You've got three threes that are mostly on chumping duty right now. It, it would be pretty dreamy for Ely if Jean Emmanuel just decides to activate the Storm script because Ooh. you can at least kill off this Karnstruck now. You're yeah. still losing your Dragon's Ray channeler, but one of the big threats is answered. But <laughs> that's not, I don't know if this is enough. Well, uh, hmm. yeah, this is tricksy. But Unholy Heat can take care of one of the bigger creatures, like you mentioned. Dragon's Rage Chandler is going to get chomped. Arclight Phoenix can block the Construct. Storming can block the 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, you see JD shaking his head because he knows this is Unholy Heat here. So he's like, I did I really need to give this timing to him? I could have just taken three damage. I'm at 13 and I'm so hmm. overwhelmingly ahead. And, yeah, I, I think at this point, JD has a pretty near certain read that this last card in Ely's hand is an Unholy Heat, but yeah, I don't think it's doing enough once that Tormod's Crypt resolves. Another Thought Monitor in hand here for Deprala. Let's see what gas he can find off the top of the library. This also adds to the artifact count, so we got two six sixes coming in hot. Two six sixes and a lethal two two. Ooh, that will... And a big yeah. poker stick. Let's get that, some trap on it. these bad boys. Let's go to game number two. Yeah, that that's that's pretty good. Oh, and finding Shadow that Tormod so script. Cool. Yeah. All right. Now oh, this I is. <laughs> I I I alluded earlier to some sideboard tech. Yeah. That this build of see. Phoenix has available. I see four copies of Hidetsugu consumes all. Uh, this, not really the matchup that this team was thinking of when they decided to splash black in their Phoenix <laughs> sideboard, but the Saga, really, really good against food, and coincidentally, John Emmanuel Dupra's list has a lot of one drops or less. Mm -hmm. We see Soul Guide Lantern, Prototype, Portable Hole, Esper Sentinel, Ornithopter, eh, kind of. There's treasure tokens. There's germ tokens. So the saga being able to come down and essentially push a reset button on a lot of the things that matters, even if we think about that last game, what were the cards that were really giving Ely trouble? There was a germ token, there was a Karn construct token, and there was a couple of Esper Sentinels at various points. So this saga could be a game changer in this matchup that JD has not faced out of other Phoenix decks up to this point. Yeah, I can agree with you there. I don't see very, very many decks running this card and I've been super excited to see where it finds its happy place and it could well be here. Grixis Phoenix. We've is seen it, Phoenix it with sneaky Grixis. <laughs> is it? Is it? Is it though, it really? <laughs> Yeah, we've seen it in some of the decks like the Rakdos Arcanist deck we saw earlier today, but the matchup wasn't Golgari mm -hmm. food, so we didn't have an opportunity to see it come in. So this may be the first opportunity we get to see how this new saga from Neon Dynasty plays out in the format. On the other side of things, John Emmanuel getting in a couple of extra reactive spells, Dovin's Veto and Mystical Dispute, as well as Sia Mastothopterus, who is able to just gum up the battlefield with a bunch of pesky little 1-1s, one -one which Hedetsugu likes to consume. Yeah, I mean, Ely's making it look easy right now. Found the Black Source, has two lands already. Hedetsugu consumes all the first copy in hand. And now JD does not have the luxury like he had before of just throwing a Soul Guide Lantern out there, throwing a Tormoz Crypt out there. He needs to think a lot more about the sequencing of his spells and what he decides to play. Big thanks already here before the first lands even hit the battlefield for Jean Emmanuel. So you can see he's thinking at least three turns ahead. He's like, okay, if I do this, that, the next thing, what's he going to do? Am I going to be really, really screwed by turn three when Hidetsugu comes down? No. These players are just, <laughs> they're so far ahead of everyone else. Yeah, part of the consideration there is if I play an island and the next turn I want to use Spire of Industry to cast Ingenious Smith because I want to hold on to my Iganjo, then I'll have to play out this Tormod script as an artifact to get that online. 
and I don't really have that luxury, so I need to play Treasure Vault. And just thinking up through those sorts of decisions before even your first land, up to three, four turns ahead of what are my plays and sequencing going to look like. Here we're gonna see the Spire of Industry, like you mentioned, and Genius Smith hits the battlefield. What do we find? It is an Ornithopter. Yeah, develop that Tormos crypt just because you want to make sure that Ely isn't able to go Faithless Looting, put some Phoenixes in the graveyard, cast two more one mana spells, and get those Phoenixes back. And now Ely has an option to just Pillar of Flame this Ingenious Smith. And just start getting going. Hidesuga consumes all two copies now, so he can actually use one at some point just to clear off a Tormos script if necessary, mm -hmm. and then still have <laughs> plenty of backup copies to do more after. Goodness me. Looks like you might want to force the issue here for JED. Well, so get... to throw this Arclight Phoenix in the bin. Yeah, he can get a Phoenix in there, doesn't quite force the issue yet, as mm -hmm. JD isn't going to be facing three spells cast this turn, only the Pillar of Flame is the follow-up here. So it is possible that Ely might want to hold it back, but I think considering your game plan is going to be casting multiple copies of Hidetsugu Consumes All, which is going to exile your graveyard anyways, mm -hmm. you don't really care about this Phoenix potentially going away. No third spell as a follow-up. That's going to be good to see for Jean Emmanuel. So a bunch of spells hanging out there. Hallowed Fountain is the draw. Plenty of lands going. Now Jean Emmanuel does have a nice turn here where he can run out the Psy Master Thopterist into the Ornithopter and just get those creatures flooding this battlefield. Yeah, this is Jean Emmanuel saying that yes, you discarded a copy of Hidetsugu Consumes All to that Faithless Looting, but there's no guarantee you found the black mana. There's only four black lands in the stack. So I'm going to run some stuff out there and maybe you discarded the saga because you couldn't cast it rather than because you had a backup copy. Yep. Uh, as it turns out, Ely was slow rolling the black land, had it all along, <laughs> and the backup copy of Hidetsugu Consumes All. So able to get on the board, do a little mini reset, and unfortunately for Jean Emmanuel, actually has the third copy for next turn to do it again with Jean Emmanuel Dupri slightly rebuilds here with a copy of Nettle Sith making a germ as well as a Thopter token. Here we're going to see the Hallowed Fountain follow up from the Nettle Sith. If the second copy of Hidetsugu Consumes All hits the battlefield, those two tokens will go away. All graveyards go bye-bye. All right, let's do it again. Yeah, why not? That's a terrifying art on that card. I better actually check it out properly. It's very what scary. Uh, I believe it's something getting consumed by Hidetsugu. Ooh. And right on time for Jean Emmanuel Dupra finds a copy of Dovin's Veto, but this hand <laughs> doesn't look great against what Ely is presenting here because I think Ely's game plan is just to hard cast an Ops of Agonis next oh, turn yeah. and refuel the hand that has been emptied up to this point. Yeah, he's like, hey, you're drawing cards. Let me try that too. Seems like a good idea. Sai is large here. <laughs> Sai is swole. He's been lifting, man. Look at that. Woo! 4-7. Go, man. I don't know if he's been lifting so much as just getting infected by some germs, <laughs> but whatever it may be, Sai is definitely in charge right now and mm. a very, very scary threat to see equipped with a nettle cyst on the other side of the board. So here's a mystical dispute. Ox of Agonis is super tempting right now. I don't know if a mystical dispute's going to be all that useful. <clears throat> As this I think game it's progresses, about to so... go away in the yeah. graveyard. It's gonna go bye bye. Yeah, he's ready to cast it or pitch it. One of the two. Those are the <laughs> options. Oh, what'd you get? Ooh, unholy heat. All right, and an opt. So that'll help him dig a little deeper into the library, find some extra goodies. And mind you, vessel of the all-consuming is fairly threatening so it's something that jean Manuel de Pra has to either leave back a blocker for or get <laughs> rid of before it grows out of hand as yeah. we see ely hovering over it like what do you do yeah yeah just gotta remind yourself there it's an ultimate win condition basically because if it deals 10 damage 
the player loses the game, so you don't want that guy making too much contact with your face. Yeah, notably it has to be 10 damage in one turn, but that's still pretty terrifying. And now Ely, with that Drake and that Arclight Phoenix, okay, I've got the ground sort of gummed up against mm -hmm. your Psy. You're fortunately not drawing any artifacts right now. I'm going to start developing my Air Force and try to get in that way. Big old birdie now, 5-4, another unholy heat off the top of the library. No land. Arclight Phoenix won't be able to caca its way into action. Does he fancy attacks here? An attack would require him to trade off the creature plus two unholy heats to deal with Psy, which mm -hmm. I don't think is the proposition that Jean Emmanuel de Pry is really uh, unhappy about, even though Ely would be. So it makes sense to just sit back and wait for the Air Force for now. Jean Emmanuel de Pry has some choices still. Those treasure vaults can make treasure tokens that, although they don't trigger Psy, they would give you some sacrifice fodder, which certainly is looking tempting. There is also a portable hole in JED's hand that at some point he can just play, saying that, okay, well, you're not going to play a Dragon's Raid Channeler that <laughs> matters this game, so I'm just going to play this hole to get a Thopter token. Nice. Psy so getting a little chunkier with those two treasures generated off of the treasure vault. Another land for turn. And I think Sai is just on the good old blocking duty. <laughs> There's another copy of Hit Itsuka Consumes All. Wow, that's all four that we've seen in this game for Cassis. Yeah, and if JED takes the opportunity to sacrifice another treasure vault on this end step, I think Cassis <laughs> is going to be pretty excited about the opportunity to wipe up four treasure tokens with the Sinesuku Consumes All and <laughs> shrink that side down, or maybe even use it as an opportunity to shrink down... Uh, uh, the Psy post-combat here. Unfortunately, that Dovin's Veto is there to make this maybe not the best attack from Cassis, though it's a lot of pressure all the same. Yeah. Five creatures swinging on in. Psy is going to do his best to block one of these vessels of the all-consuming. There Aganjo is the Iganjo. The yep. yep. There is the Iganjo that can deal with one of these other threats. Crackling Only Drake being two. the biggest of the bunch. JD has to remind himself that he does have a legendary creature on the battlefield. <laughs> so Iganjo not going to cost three mana to activate. So bye bye crackling Drake, just three damage coming in in the air and then seven on the ground. That's still a big chunk of damage being taken here. Yeah, Down to nine goes JD. Half of his life total. This vessel grows, so still a lot of value. Oh, they see each other. Oh, that's icky. Oh, no, no. I was about to say, if that one gets both the counters, that would be gross. <laughs> yeah, Vessel does get the counter from any combat damage it deals. It doesn't have to be two players. So mm -hmm. the one that died did trigger from dealing damage to the side, but ultimately it's gone before it gets that counter. And considering play this Hidesugu's Consume All wouldn't actually kill the side here because it, it would only get shrunk down by two, there's no reason for Ely to run it out here and now can just sit behind his Air Force. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I feel like they need an awesome. Ely sacking these two gives. E Sorry, John Ooh. sacking these two gives Ely a window to double unholy heat the Psy now. And John to cast that, <laughs> put down the Dovin's Veto. You see that. That that changes everything because without that Psy, oh, no. none of these oh, cards no. really do anything anymore. And yeah, that is disaster for Oof. John Emmanuel de Pra as Ely Cassis firmly takes the opportunity to get rid of that Psy. And yeah, Jean Emmanuel de Pra has an Odawara, but the rest of the cards in his hand don't really do anything at this point. Yeah, that's bad news bears here for Jean Emmanuel. You don't expect the double unholy heat. That's for sure. Yeah, just a lot of patience from Ely Cassis maximizing every card and you know, it it didn't have that huge explosive effect that we could see from the card, but so far, especially drawing all four copies of it, Hidetsuko <laughs> Consumes All has definitely changed the dynamics of the matchup at least a little bit in the favor of the Is it Phoenix deck. Swing all, sweet creatures. As Ottawara, Soaring City will be able to take care of one of these threats. It is going to be the vessel of the all-consuming. Get that off the battlefield because you don't want to give Ely the opportunity to draw more cards with this 
Going down to two. So yeah, Ilikasis looking poised to tie things up here between himself and Johnny Manuel. Yeah, you want to get rid of the creature that can't come back as a creature immediately. We might even see Jean Manuel Dufra just counter the Sedetsu who consumes all, as those cards aren't doing that much in his hand. Mm -hmm. And his only hope here is finding maybe something like a thought monitor that would then give him more cards to answer a second creature while using it as a blocker. And I feel like this is Ely's opportunity to say, All right, I'm gonna just keep presenting threats in case you are able to come out of this somehow. Just gonna hold it back that instead. Won't do it. That ain't gonna cut it, unfortunately. So we're Ooh. going to go to game number three here. Slight little misstep from Jean Emmanuel, but seeing those draws, I mean, I don't know if it would have mattered all that much in the long time, but he would have, he would have at least had an extra turn there had Sai stuck around. Yeah, it's hard to say whether it would have mattered, but certainly losing the Sai there all but locked it up, and I feel like Ely has to feel really good about how that game went. So the four sideboard cards putting in the work, and they're going to come out, it looks like, for Cassis. Yeah, Ely's thinking about not wanting them on the draw, perhaps thinking mm. that he'll be too on the back foot if Jean Emmanuel de Pra opens with something like an Esper Sentinel and gets an Ingenious Smith down before Ely's able to do Hidetsu Yukinsu's all. So maybe boarding into a more reactive game plan with spot removal, a few counter spells that are cheaper and brazen borrower, able to answer those ingenious myths, thinking they ha they'll have more of an impact when he's on the draw than the Hidetsugu consumes all. So this must be a very, very tense moment here for Jean Emmanuel de Pro. He's just one game away from locking up a top eight. Pretty sure he wants to get it over and done with right here right now so just gotta keep his wits about him and play it cool calm and collectively like he always does Ely Cassis would love to improve to 11 wins increase his chances of making day three. Oh, this hand is okay you do have the ingenious smith your blue white land being a pathway meaning that if you want to cast the smith on two you don't necessarily have blue mana for the prototype or the size following that makes this hand a little bit awkward and i wonder if that's enough for jean emmanuel to actually mulligan this even though he has the smith he wants he has the bank buster he, he, oh it's so close believe in the heart of the cards money yeah, and Ely takes a mulligan down to six. This six looks a lot better. Could just get rid of the ox here, considering he's on the draw, and it might end up being too slow. Uh, will want that early interaction spell in the Flame Blessed Bolt, but maybe thinking that if he's trading one for one, he'll need this ox later on in the game to refuel his hand. And as I believe it is a one of Ox of Agonis, if he puts it on the bottom, he knows that he won't be drawing it again. So ultimately thinking he can't afford to let it go, but I'm looking at those two copies of Psy and I'm thinking, oh man, Ely, get that, get that dispute back, man. <laughs> well, we do have the Hengegate pathway down. So John Emmanuel says, I value getting my blue stuff down over this ingenious Smith. Hopefully the top deck or the top of the library behaves for him. That's an Esper sense, so that's a little unfortunate. <laughs> Yeah, behave is not quite what happened here, and no. yeah, this this game is going to work out really well for Jean Emmanuel de Pra if Ely doesn't draw anything here. Opt finds consider. Does that stay on top of the library here for Cassis? It, it's strange because normally this Phoenix deck wants all the all the draw spells that it can get, but. You also have to consider that you are falling behind on tempo if all you're doing using your mana is on these one mana draw spells. So Ely thinking, I need to do something this turn and consider isn't going to let me do it. And a braid is a great one being an answer to this yep. bank bus, sir. Certainly is. As destroyed target artifact. It's going to take care of the bank buster. You can see John Emmanuel not happy don't. about that, but he's going <laughs> to smile. Say, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Oh, Ely. 
Ily, I was going to say oh, that no. there's very few cards that are bad for John Emmanuel Defraud oh. to draw there. The white cards are some of them. Thought Monitor is another, and not doing anything on that turn is so, so costly for Jean Emmanuel Dupra. If that Oof. Bank Buster had lived, he could draw another card or use it for mana with the prototype to cast a sigh. Mm -hmm. As it is, he just took an entire turn cycle off in a matchup that is so heavily tempo dependent that it is already looking a lot better for Ely Kazis than it did based on those opening hands. To right draw Hallowed Fountain. Woo, okay. There's a something. That's good. Yeah, a little bit of a sigh of relief. And the question is, will that sigh of relief be followed by a sigh master thopterous? <laughs> no, <laughs> just an S for Sentinel, there. then the sigh. Alright, so we got something going here. Got the got the mana. Have the colors. It's all good. All right, Ely needs to look at his hand and he's thinking, what are my plays here? Because if he wants to go something like Expressive Iteration into Stormwing Entity, it might be tempting to just use the Flame Bless Bolt on the end step. But instead, what he can do now is bolt the Sentinel, pay, and then play the Stormwing Entity. Just continue on this mm. philosophy of never give the Azorius Affinity cards, Azorius <laughs> Affinity deck, more cards if I can afford it. Ooh. Ooh, cheeky. So it's not going to be the Storming Entity. It might be a petty theft here. Yeah, maybe just prioritizing fully owning the tempo in this game and just saying that, okay, if, if you want to get Sai on the battlefield, you have to take another turn off to do so and hopefully not be able to cast any artifact to go with that. Well, Genius Smith is going to land on the battlefield. Let's see what JED finds on top of the library. Looks like it's a Moonsnare prototype. And something else as he considers what he needs to add to this battlefield to get himself even Stevens here with Cassis. Yeah, thinking about the options, does have that treasure vault that he drew for the turn, so is able to go land, use the prototype with the smith to get Psy Master Thought first back on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. So Ely bought a little bit of time, but now it's once again Jean Emmanuel de Prat that's fully on the board and Ely's playing from the hand still. So. Yep. So to kick things off this turn, Ely Cassis is gonna look to expressive iteration. Sees a phoenix and two lands on top of the library. It's eh. it's it's okay. It, it it it's not great. You have a land. You're able to go storming entity here. You're able to get some scries in and potentially this ox of Agonis next turn discards yeah. two phoenix. Uh, Pretty good. The the one saving grace right now for Ely is Jean Emmanuel de Pra is not presenting any sort of soul guide lantern or Tormod script yet, but it feels like Ely pl is playing much too fair of a game plan <laughs> against a deck that is on the verge of doing some very unfair things. Oh, yes. Let's start off with said unfair things. Let's make this Thought Monitor redonkulously cheap and see what goodies we can find on top of the library here for JED. Thought Monitor for two. Draw two cards. Make another Thopter. This ingenious Smith. You can attack with it. If oh, I love this blocks, attack. You can make a treasure. Oh, no. It's already grown once this turn. So this is just offering a trade. This is just offering yeah. a fair trade here from John Emmanuel de Pras, saying that I don't want you to have a large flyer with prowess available to you. Yeah. This is also him saying, I don't think you have anything that can make this bird bigger. Yeah. <laughs> and if you do, you're giving me a card, so I'll take it. Mm-hmm. As for Sentinel, just makes you feel so powerful. <laughs> oh. All right, off the top of the library, what do we get, Thought Monitor? Let's see. Ooh, another Bank Buster. Nice. Another Bank Buster, another Thopter token. Uh, the question is, does Jean Emmanuel de Pra think Ely boarded out the Hidetsuku Consumes All for the third game, or if he's still under the assumption that they're in the deck, will we mm -hmm. see him play a bit more conservatively, or will we see him just allow it to happen and go all in? Do you pay the one? Yes, says Cassis. Alright, so now that that guy's had his tax paid, 
Unholy Heat's not really what you want to see. Can't cast three spells in succession here. If he could find... Yeah, would have loved a Faithless, faithless looting. looting. Yeah, that would have been great. Unfortunately, no Delirium can send the Unholy Heat at the Esper Sentinel. Could even shock and represent this Brazen Borrower as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a situation where you're not dealing with the main problem card from Jean Emmanuel de Fra, which is the Psy. And the worst news for Ely is even if he answers it, there's a backup copy waiting there in Jean Emmanuel de Fra's hand. Oof. This is an. Pretty tricky situation here for Ely Cassis. These artifacts are just amassing on the side of the battlefield. Another land for turn. Not really what Jean Emmanuel wants to see, but he does have that Reckoner Bankbuster available to draw an extra card. And just start delivering some beatdowns. Yes, I. Teeny tiny just... beatdowns. <laughs> <laughs> just the tiniest, just little cuts. Sai is so incredibly good against these decks like. Is it Phoenix? Because a lot of them either have very few board wipe spells or they have no board wipe spells. And if you start just taking the board wide with a 1 4 creature that is pretty resilient to a card like Unholy Heat, unless your opponent jumps through some hoops to get Delirium online and your deck can remove Delirium sometimes, then this creature is sticking around and you're seeing that it is single handedly just burying Ely Cassis this game in tokens, in potential card advantage, because Jean Emmanuel can at any time activate it, sacrifice two artifacts, and draw a card. And it, it just feels like with every decision, Ely is falling further and further behind, and his deck doesn't have the tools to come back into it. Oh, that is a great find for Jean Emmanuel. Tormod's Crypt, an answer to these Arclight Phoenixes, should they find their way into the graveyard. Oh boy. Yeah, holds back the thought monitor. Praising borrowers and blocker is there, though. Honestly, I'm not even sure if Jean Emmanuel de Proc cares that much <laughs> about losing the thought monitor in that exchange. It it it's just Every single card is so good here. The Tormod script in hand will just make sure that Ely Cassis isn't able to have that explosive Phoenix turn that he might be looking for. And even if he does, well, mm. JD is at 18 with a flying blocker back. So John Emanuel could honestly just hold the Tormod script back here and just say that I, I don't really need this uh, to walk into a Hidetsu who consumes all. Yeah. I can beat you getting some Phoenixes right now. I don't care. There's a consider. Oh, boy. All right, Cassis, what can you do here, friend? Let's see if there's an answer to this battlefield. I feel like we are getting closer and closer to Ely considering conceding this game, Ely. <laughs> Depends what's on top of the library here. Can he find anything to keep him in this? That's a crackling drake. That's a big old birdie. It's large oh, for sure, but it's going to have such a hard time breaking through against mm -hmm. the Thopter tokens. So yes, it's large. Yes, it's going to do a good job of blocking some of this aggression from Depra. Maybe not able to attack as much as he was previously and giving Ely a bit more time, but it's not going to further the game plan of Ely winning quite yet. Yeah. I think at this point, Ely's just happy to have some creatures down on the battlefield. Soul Guide Lantern, another piece of removal for the graveyard here. Another Thopter as well, off of Psy Master Thopterist. So, you know, he's almost at the point where he can just keep spamming out these little 1-1s, one -ones, just swing, and eventually chip away at the life total here. <laughs> A one-mana Thought Monitor. Yep, yeah, seems mana, good. All the coupons. One-mana, three power of flying, draw two cards. That... <laughs> Oh no, I'm not a mathematician. We may oh! Oh, we may need Frank's help for this one, but I like that rate. <laughs> Look at that. Nettle cyst times two of the top of the library. The these cards are gonna be huge. This is gonna be the biggest germ I've ever seen. It's gonna be Godzilla sized at this rate. Yeah, those those are gonna be some large germs and it, again at this point, John Emmanuel just has to be thinking, <laughs> what can I lose to? And that list is getting smaller and smaller. I'm sure that he's still thinking about <laughs> that Suga consumes all, but 
What Jean-Manuel Dupra may not know is, guess what? They're boarded out. Ely mm -hmm. doesn't have a comeback mechanic against this board. Goodness, this is just such an absolutely ridiculous battlefield right now. Look at that 15-15 germ. This nettle cyst is going to attach itself to one of these ground creatures, no doubt. Oh, hey, Esper Sentinel, would you like to pay the, I don't know, 16-16? Yeah, that's, guess, no. that's the heftiest tax we've seen so far uh, in this tournament. And at the moment, Ely only has one blocker available for ground creatures. So you know how this crackling drake was going to hold back? All... It's not. <laughs> it's not holding back any attackers. <laughs> it's, it's a chump blocker. It's going under the sentinel bus. <laughs> it sure is. Oh, he's hovering over the adjust options button. Ely Cassis. Has no answer here to Jean Emmanuel de Praz's token army, and Jean Emmanuel is gonna be our second player in the top eight. Congratulations, sir. Azorius Affinity getting it done for the Frenchman.